Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I want to talk to you tonight. Uh, I'm teaching in this series. How many of you, first of all, enjoyed uh, Marriage by the Book, the conference we just had? Yep. Praise God. Um, if you weren't here, you can go back and watch the, the last few sessions online. Uh, Rick and Rebecca Porterfield were here last Thursday. We had a Friday night session, and then they did, of course, both Sunday morning sessions. And I sure appreciate them and their ministry and what they're doing uh, for the body of Christ. It's a blessing. Praise God. So uh, previously, the week before, on Thursday evening, I've been talking about the effect of faith, right? Remember that? The effect of faith and how faith should have an effect on our life. There should be a tangible effect of, of our faith. And I want to talk to you tonight, sort of the subtopic of what I, I like to teach on, and it's faith for the eternal. Faith for the eternal. You see, when our faith is rooted in the eternal, it, it changes things. We begin to think and see things very differently when we have an eternal mindset, okay? Now, unfortunately, um, you would think that, that most of the church and body of Christ has this mindset, but to be frank, we really don't. A, a, a lot of Christians don't think eternally. Like, they don't think long-term. You know, you can say it like that. Meaning, when I say long-term, I mean, they don't really kind of just think, like, this life is it, right? I mean, this is really, really important. Yeah, they believe in, et in eternal life, but they don't really conduct their daily activities and their thinking with an eternal mindset, Okay. And so I want to talk about that tonight uh, and what the Lord's given me. So turn in your Bible with me to John chapter 17, verse 15. Praise God. John 17, 15. I know John likes John. That goes without saying, right? <laughs> I beat you to it tonight. John 17, 15. Let's actually, let's go to verse 14. He says, I have given them thy word. Now, the word of God is what separates you from the world. Let me say that again. The word of God is really what separates you from the world. Meaning, when you choose to live according to the word of God, that begins to separate you from how the world lives right? So even though you can be born again, right? You can be born again, you can be spirit-filled, but you can still be living like the world. You say, how is that possible? Well, if you don't focus and meditate and read and study and, and have a priority for the Word of God in your life, you almost just don't know better in a lot of ways. I mean, there are people that come into churches, get born again, even receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and they never renew their mind to the Word of God. So really, the transformation uh, of, even though their spirit has been transformed, their spirit is alive unto God. They are eternal beings that are going to heaven. But they still walk like, talk like, act like the world because there's been no mind renewal to the Word of God or no adherence to what the Word of God says. Are you following me? Okay, so he says, I have given them thy word. And that word is what separates them from the world. And the world hath hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. This is Jesus speaking, right? And he says, I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from evil. He says, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Look at this now. He says, sanctify. Now, he says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Praise God. Say that with me. Thy word is truth. Say it again. Thy word is truth. What's the truth? The word of God. Thy word is truth. And he says, sanctify them through thy truth. Or you can say, sanctify them through thy word, right? In fact, when I started this ministry, the Lord really gave me the washing of the water of the word, okay? And, and, and so I won't go into that. And that, that's just, it's like the word of God, it cleans us up. 
it washes. Like when we come to church, the Word of God should, should just work on us, uh, on, our, on our life, and just clean us up week after week after week. And a lot of people go, well, you know, I, I go to church. Yeah, I go to church. Yeah, well, not just once or twice. That's why as we consistently come into the house of the Lord, right, and, and allow the Word of God to clean us up. And guess what? We all need cleaned up, including myself. <laughs> I mean, there isn't a week goes by that I don't need getting cleaned up, all right? Just like in the natural, I take a shower at least once a week. Okay, that's a joke. <laughs> Maybe twice a week, right? No. But I'm telling you, I need the Word of God on a regular basis too. In fact, I can tell when I haven't been taking the amount of time that I need for me to be in the Word. I can just tell it. I can sense it. I can sense it. I can sense it, not to be crude, but I can sense it like I can sense I need to take a shower. <laughs> you know? I mean, just you feel sticky. You feel, you know, when you need a shower, maybe humidity or whatever else, you know, and you're like, oh, man, you ever said, I, man, I need to take a shower, right? I can sense that in my own life where it comes to the things of the Word of God. I can literally sense it in my, in my being that I need the Word and I need the sanctification of the Word of God. Amen? And this is, I believe that every Christian has this, this sense about themselves to know this, all right? And uh, this, this, this word sanctification is another word for purify, okay? Purify. Or another word for uh, separate. It, it begins to separate us from the world. Um, I, I know with my own attitude, my own mindset, you can begin to parallel the world and how the world acts and thinks. And you begin to get sort of on their level, right? And you can get frustrated like the world. If you're not, uh, if you're not aware, you can become fearful like the world, right? All these things can happen, but then you get back in the Word of God, and the Word of God begins to sanctify you, begins to purify you, begins to separate you from how the world thinks, and how the world views things, and how the world talks, and how the world acts. Amen? Amen? Praise God. And so he's saying here, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Amen. You and I are here for a purpose. We have been sent by God into the world to make a difference. Amen. God doesn't want us out of here, right? Instead, God, God wants us smack dab in the middle of 2022 with a purpose in our heart. Amen? You are filled with godly purpose on the inside of you because the church, I truly believe the church is the organization, if you will, or the, is, the, is the body the embodiment that is holding back the evil in the world. Amen? Now, again, when I say church, I'm not talking about a religion. I'm not talking about a building. I'm talking about the body of Christ worldwide. We have significant purpose in the world. And when the church <clears throat> doesn't operate in its rightful spiritual authority um, in the earth, Evil runs rampant. In fact, this, this happens um, this happens if, if, well, let's just, I mean, we see it now. If the church isn't operating in the rightful spiritual authority, you see this regionally. You can see this in nations. You can see when there's a lack of, of, of operation of spiritual authority in whole entire nations. You begin to see the evil that begins to take place. You can see this in particular uh, states in our United States. You can see this in certain areas and sectors of our country. You can see this, um, you ever heard of the Bible Belt, right? Well, in the Bible Belt, there's a lot of things that don't happen that happen in California and South Florida. 
or New York. You following me? What, what's going on? Why is that? Well, there, it, the, the reality is there's really a lack of spiritual authority being exercised, rightful spiritual, uh, spiritual authority being exercised in those particular areas and regions oftentimes, right? There's other things, but that is a big reason why that happens and why we see the evil push forward. And that's why our lives are so significant. That's why he's like, hey, don't take them out of the world. That's not what the heart of God is, that you would keep them in the world, but you would keep them from evil. Amen? Okay, now uh, uh, stick with me on this because we're really going to see some things here because our faith needs and it has, it really needs an eternal mindset and thinking. Have you ever found yourself just being so like, you get frustrated over the, of the stupidest things? I mean, and you look back at it and go, why was I that upset over that? Yeah? Have you ever thought, you probably have, have you ever thought, that's really not an eternal mindset because that's not going to make a difference five years from now. What got me so bothered and hot and bothered and frustrated today, I won't even remember it five years ago, right? Sometimes you want to remember it tomorrow, right? Well, what is that? Part of why that happens is because we don't have a eternal mindset. We're not thinking long term. We're not thinking, we, we get so focused on the here and now, and we can get frustrated so quickly with the here and now, what's going on, and we lose sight of the big picture. And I believe that is, a, that is one of the wiles, one of the tricks of the enemy, is to try to get us so focused and so uptight and so whatever, even if it's just busy on these things that are actually temporary and have no eternal weight or consequences. But if the church will begin to look long-term at these things and see these things from an eternal mindset, I believe that the power and authority of God in us will begin to rise up and we'll begin to see things that we need to actually see. Because I think a lot of things are very distracting. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Let's look at this real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 3, I'll read this, the Amplified. We looked at this a few weeks ago. It says, for though we walk, he says, live in the flesh, right? We're, we're living. We have flesh that we live in. We are not carrying on our warfare according to the flesh. Amen? And using mere human weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the throwing or overthrow and destruction of strongholds. Praise God. Boy, there's so much that could be taught on just right here. In so much as refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ, the anointed one. Now, we have to have the right spiritual attitude about ourselves. And this attitude must have an eternal mindset. Let me say that again. We must have the right e e spiritual attitude about ourselves. And what must accompany that is the right eternal or have an eternal mindset. Now, not all... Not, Everything you see here, everything you see, hear, feel, touch, and the natural is temporary, right? Everything's temporary. I mean, the chairs you're sitting on, yeah, they're nice chairs, but they're not going to last forever, right? In fact, when you see, you know, we, we can look now and, and see, you know, uh, the, the, we, we just stayed in a, in a home, and it was built in 1929, okay? Well, that's, that's been around a little while. But you can see the deterioration. You can see how there's constantly trying to keep that, that building up. And the community that we were staying in was a, a, like a historical uh, community. And you see these buildings we were going in. It takes great effort to try to keep them just in working standard. Why? Because it's all deteriorating. It's all going back to dust the way it was, right? And so 
what so many people focus on. You know, we were driving around that area. There was a lot of nice vehicles and cars. But, you know, I mean, the nicest of the nicest of the nicest cars that we saw there, you know, 50 years is what they're going to look like. <laughs> they probably won't even be on the road. And as much money and much effort and much, you know, pride do people have in those things, it's all temporary. And the reason I'm telling you this and use this as examples is because it's important to have and develop the eternal mindset. It's okay to look at those things. I don't care. I mean, that's why, I mean, I don't think God cares if you have what, whatever you want to drive. You want to drive, you know, a, a Toyota? You want to drive a Land Cruiser? You want to drive a Jeep? You want to drive a, a Porsche, a Mercedes, a Rolls Royce? I don't care. And I don't think God cares either. Personally, I don't think he cares at all what you, what you drive. As long as whatever you drive or whatever you live in or whatever you wear doesn't have you. Right? Doesn't have you. Your, your, your first focus and love and trust and on and on and your identity isn't caught up in those things. Right? I don't care if you want to drive a car, you want to drive a boat. I don't care if you want to fly a helicopter everywhere you go. I don't care if you want to pri fly your private jet. I don't care. And I don't think God cares either as long as it doesn't have you. Okay? So, there are things that, that are eternal that carry weight. There are things that are eternal that, that matter. And, and Matthew, go to Matthew 16, 25. Let's just look at that real quick. Matthew 16, 25. He says, for whoever is bent on saving his temporary life, his comfortable uh, comfort and security here shall lose it, eternal life, and whoever loses his life, his comfort, his security here, for my sake, shall find it life everlasting. Okay? So he's saying, don't get all caught up in the temporary, right? Because that's the wrong mindset. Whatever, whatever you give up temporarily, you'll gain eternally. Amen? And I think this is important from a, a giving standpoint, right? Our, our sowing and our giving and just our whole area of life because so much of how people's attitudes are dictated based on, you know, here, here's, I'm going to tell myself, I had a bad attitude the other day. I had a pretty crummy attitude. I was really frustrated. We had some stuff going on. Here I'm out of town, on vacation, getting phone calls, having to deal with stuff that's from back here. I was frustrated about what was going on trying to deal with it on the phone. So we're going to go to a nice restaurant. We just got done touring this college, of which my kids were kind of like this. <laughs> Let's go tour a college. They're on spring break. They're not really wanting to be at another school. Okay, I get it, all right? But it's what we had to do. So we kind of drag them through it. I mean, they had a pretty good attitude all in all. But, and so then I have to deal with these issues. And then I'm super hungry because, I don't know, it was like, three o'clock, I think, by the time we hadn't eaten lunch, we had barely had breakfast, and so, oops, so we're going to go to a nice restaurant, so we go to this nice restaurant, we heard about it, read, read the reviews, the reviews are supposed to be really, really nice, literally, I had the second worst hamburger I've ever had in my life, I had to pay eight dollars to park at this place, I spent, I don't know, $25 on the hamburger, I think. And then the fries, oh, the fries don't come with it. The fries are another $11, right? And so, not to mention all the other things. And it was terrible. It, it tastes like a piece of fish, and it was a hamburger. And I like fish, but it tastes like an old dead fish, all right? I'm just saying. It was, and so I was getting frustrated. And I'm like, can I just get a decent meal? I'm paying big bucks for this. Let's go, right? And, and I'm looking at this, and I had, and I'm, anyways, I'm, I'm waking my way back to the car after lunch, and the Lord's dealing with my heart. He's like, all this is temporary. All this is temporary. I kept hearing that. All this is temporary. All this is temporary. All this is temporary. It just, I felt like all week long, I kept hearing, this is all temporary. This is all temporary. And I noticed that when I would go ahead and listen to his voice, it get my mind back in the right place. What, what, what's the eternal? How, do, how can I think eternally? You see, when you think temporary, you get focused on you a lot of times. But when you think eternal, you begin to focus on others. Amen? Huh. Go to Matthew 19, 16. I'm going to read a few here. I'll read all this in the Amplified Classic here. It says, And behold, there came a man up to him, saying, Teacher, what excellent 
uh, and perfectly and essentially good deed must I do to possess eternal life. You've heard this, right? This is, this is the story of the rich young ruler, right? And he comes to Jesus and he asks him, what, 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 I, what am I going to do? You remember, he says, oh, there's only one thing you lack, Jesus says, right? But go, go down to verse 29 in the Amplified, same chapter, chapter 19, 29, just because I don't want to read through it all tonight. I just wanted to show, point you out these two things in this particular chapter. He says, and anyone and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters, or father, or mother, or children, or lands, for my sake, will receive many, even a hundred times more, and will inherit eternal life. Now, there is a lot in that, and I don't want to go into great depth, but you see how there has to be, at times, a leaving. And sometimes, it's not even a leaving from a physical leaving, it, it can be that, but sometimes you need to leave some things in, in your mind. You know what I mean? You need to leave some ways of thinking in the dust because that old way of thinking is holding you in bondage to, to what it was. And you will never leave what it was until you start looking to what it is. And you have to begin to look at these things eternally. You need to be looking at things like, I'm not going to fuss with this person and get all worked up over this silly thing because I'm thinking eternally. I'm not going to get all worried and, and hot and bothered by the way they're acting, the way they're treating me because I'm thinking eternal. All right? And you see, when we begin to do these things, it's like, it, to me, it's like when we stop holding to those things, it's when God can pour them back into our life. And that's why I so, it's so powerful here when it talks about shall receive even a hundred times more. He's like, whatever you leave for my sake in the gospel, you can receive a hundred, say a hundred times more. A hundred times more and eternal life. And eternal life. Now, I wasn't always taught by every ministry that we were involved with, that you could have eternal life and a hundred times more. I was kind of taught in, in some of the churches we went to, not, not by some of the ministries that we listened to, uh, like on the radio back in the day, but the churches we went to, some of them, if we couldn't find a church in the area we lived, they would kind of like, it's either, you, either if you want to go after the hundred times more, you can't have eternal life. So you got to give up that and just forget it but you're getting eternal life. But that's not the way God is. God's like, whatever you give up for my sake and the gospel's sake, I'll bless you a hundred times more and eternal life. When you hook up to God, you don't just hook up to him for eternal life. When you hook up to him, he meets all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen? So God doesn't want you going without. He just doesn't want you trusting in that more than you trust him. Amen? And so that's why I think it's a really good mindset that every good thing, including that parking spot that we got, comes from him. Like, it's his favor. It's his goodness. It's his mercy on my life. Because everything I have good comes from him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Go to John chapter 5, verse 24. You getting something out of this? Praise God for his word. John 5, 24, he says, I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, the person whose ears are open to my words, who listens to my message and believes and trusts in and clings to and relies on him who sent me has, pos uh, has possesses now eternal life. And he does not come into judgment, does not incur sentence of judgment, will not come under condemnation, but he has already passed over out of death into life. Praise God. Say, into life. You see, to have the impact that we're created to have on the people around us, we must think and have a mindset that is one of eternal, eternity, long-term, that's why, I mean, you can say whatever you want to say about me. Like, you, you, want to, you want to write a bad review? You want to write this? You want to say this about me? You want to write me a nasty email? You want to send me whatever text? 
Who cares? Because I have an eternal mindset. Yeah, I don't, yeah, it doesn't feel good, but who cares? Because I have an eternal mindset. And my goal is to minister to the life and the hearts of people and long-term mindset, right? You don't like this, you don't like that, whatever. We can think eternally. We can believe eternally. We can talk eternally. We can talk eternally, right? <clears throat> It'll be in our speech. It'll be in our walk. It, it will be uh, in how we act and, and how we behave. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll behave like eternity actually exists. And the reason I'm doing what I'm doing is because I love God and I know that God has a plan for your life. Amen? Now, one of the other things that Brother uh, E. Hagen Sr. had said in a, in a, in a prophecy is he said that uh, before the church leaves the earth, and again, I'm just paraphrasing this, I'm just going by memory, he said that, um, that men are going to walk like God upon the face of the earth. Whew. That's powerful. And he said that the glory of God is going to be so strong in some of our churches that allow the power and the presence of God that when the people walk in the front doors of the church, that if there's people that walk in that are actually missing physical body parts, that they'll be restored. And he said that the churches, those churches, won't have enough seats to contain the amount of people that will be filling those buildings by the leadership and the draw of the Spirit of God. Woo! Wow. Now, listen, you might sit here and say, that is too far out for me. This church is like not what I'm used to. Just that talk alone is, is, is it's true to the Bible because I've showed this church how Jesus restored, remember that? Restored physical body parts on people. You saw it with a man with a withered hand. Stretch forth your hand. His hand was made whole, right? You saw the woman with the issue of blood. She had blood. The blood stopped flowing, but he says, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. We saw the leper, how the leprosy was, was cured of leprosy. But then he says, the one that came back, and he said, you shall be made whole, right? So his flesh was returned to wholeness and soundness. You see the man who's in the Garden of Gethsemane when his ear was cut off, right? But Peter, and he reaches up and he puts the ear back onto his head. This is physical restoration on people's bodies. I like that, just kind of just a side note, just a little side note here, okay? It's interesting that in the book of Genesis, he told Adam and Eve, and he gave them dominion over all the earth, didn't he? What's interesting about that is Adam's body was formed out of the earth. So as, if you think about that, God gave Adam dominion even not only over all the earth, but over his own body. Isn't it interesting that Jesus, when he was asked how to pray, he says, my, my, uh, hallowed be thy name, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Well, our bodies, you know, they say ash to ash is dust to dust, that, that, that comes out of the body, comes out of the earth, as it was in the Garden of Eden, you see that, that the will of God, for, even for our physical bodies, is the, is the will of God that is in heaven. All right, that was a side note. I'm just saying that this is an eternal mindset. When we have an eternal mindset, even over our physical bodies, we don't just, just go along to get along. We don't just say, well... You know, I'm getting old, I'm getting old. Now, I understand aging, I see it, you know, I see it in the mirror, you see it in the mirror, right? But I don't just sit there and just sign up for, for being old and just saying, well, I can't do this, I can't do that. I think that our bodies can age and us, and us still be strong in the Lord, amen? I think that we can still be physically strong, we can still be mentally sharp. I don't think that just because you gain years on your life that you have to sign up for all the things that, that is associated with the curse. In fact, the Bible talks about that you and I have the mind of Christ. 
You see, this is why the book of Ephesians, when people uh, become born again, when somebody asks me where should I start reading my Bible, where I recommend them to read is I, I would recommend them to read a, a chapter in Proverbs every day and, a, and, and a, maybe a chapter or at least a portion of Ephesians. But really, I draw people to the focus of Ephesians because the book of Ephesians so much so identifies with our life as a Christian. And it's important that you and I find our identity, our, our identity in Christ. You see, our identity has been, our identity has been chased, and we've been lied to about our identity from the day we got born again, really. Because the devil is all about the identity of the believer. Because, hey, if you don't know who you are in Christ, man, I'm telling you that you'll, you'll walk around and you'll wonder why this and why that and why this. And it, it can be really, really confusing. But uh, a, 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 an eternal mindset. See, too much of the body of Christ thinks small. Too many Christians think small. Small thinking, you'll get a kick out of this. Small thinking is a huge problem. <laughs> Let me say that again. Small thinking is a huge problem. And it's a big problem in the body of Christ. Small thinking is really always a result of a temporary mindset. If you're writing notes, I would write these things down. The Lord gave me these things. Small thinking is a huge problem in the body of Christ. And small thinking is always a result of a temporary mindset. Big thinking comes from an eternal mindset. Big, big thinking comes from an eternal mindset. How many of you have ever heard of Oral Roberts? Okay, most of the people in the room. Oral Roberts was a pioneer of faith. Oral Roberts was buying television time when there was only about three television stations, period. And Oral Roberts, on his television programs back in the 1950s, as I can remember it, he would have tent crusades. And they would pray. They'd bring the sick and those who were, uh, 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 you know, ailed, and they would show them, and he would pray over them on stage right there. And they would testify of the healing power of God. Or Roberts built a university, or Roberts built a hospital, and many hospitals around the world, in Africa, and so on and so forth. Or Roberts had a plaque on his desk, and I don't remember it exactly what it was, but it basically said, no small plans are made here. Something to that effect, if you know it exactly, it was something like that. And he, he, he was constantly thinking bigger than people of his time and era, and, and, and constituents thought. He wasn't thinking like they were thinking. He was thinking big thinking. And I really think that religion has had a, a religion has put a wet blanket on big thinking for a lot of years. It tries to just like, well, you know, let's just in moderation, let's not get too carried away. We don't want to be too saved. We don't want to be too healed. We don't want to be too prosperous. Let's keep everything sort of, you know, in moderation here. But God is a big thinker. I said, God is a big, 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 big thinker. Okay? And I think that the body of Christ, all of us, myself including, we need to have a a mindset of abundance, and I think we need to have a mindset of completeness. I'm going to say that again. A mindset of abundance and a mindset of completeness. No lack, nothing missing, nothing broken. You see, God, <clears throat> God doesn't see you how you are. In fact, God doesn't see you how you were. And he does, so he doesn't see you how you were, and he doesn't see you how you are. You want to know how God sees you? God sees you <laughs> how he said. God sees you how he said. Now, I want that to sink in. He doesn't see you how you were. He doesn't see you how you are. He sees you the way he says about you. You know, in Ephesians, going back to that, that reference of Ephesians, 
Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5, it says, you are, it talks about, he says, because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. So think about that just for a minute. Here we are, dead in our transgressions, right? But because of his great love for us and his mercy, he's made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. We're sitting there dead in our transgressions, but he's looking at us saying, I made you alive. Because he sees us the way he says what he says about us. And he says, it is by grace that you have been saved. You and I are his beloved. Whether we think it, feel it, look like it, smell like it, we're his beloved. Whether you were, are, he sees you as his beloved. You go on, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says, For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We are God's masterpiece. You see how God sees us? This is how God sees us. He sees us as he says we are. He sees us as chosen. He sees us as holy. That's Ephesians 1, 4. He says, for he has chosen us in him, glory to God, before the creation of the world. Huh? <laughs> this is big. Before he created the world, he sees us in him, chosen in him. And it says, holy and blameless in his sight. Say holy, holy. Blameless, blameless in his sight. Well, if that's the way you are in his sight, does it really, do you really care what anybody else thinks about you? You see, that's an eternal mindset. God has an eternal mindset about us. Because before the foundation of the world, this is how he saw us. He doesn't see us how we were. He doesn't see us how we are. He sees us how he says we are. And when we adhere to that, when we begin to look into the word of God, what it's described as, doesn't Paul describe it as a mirror, right? We look and we behold and we look at ourselves that the word of God is like a mirror. So you look at, you, you look at the word of God and in your mind you have an image of who you are, but when you look in the word of God, the word of God begins to tell you who you are. The word of God projects the true reality of who you are and what you look like. And I'm telling you, it begins to change the way you see yourself, begins to change the way you think about yourself, and it really begins to develop in you a, a, a eternal mindset, holy, blameless. Uh, in Ephesians 1, 7 says, you are, he says, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. So, you're forgiven. In Ephesians 4, 22 and 20 through 24, it says, you were taught with regard to your former way of life um, to put off your old self, which is, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your mind. You see that? To be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Woo! You see this? Eternal mindset. Ephesians 1, 7 says, in him we have redemption. You are redeemed. Say, I'm redeemed. He says, you have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Verse, uh, verse 7 of chapter 1 talks about how you and I are worth more than gold. It says, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according with the riches of God's grace. 
in uh, Ephesians 1, 4, and, and, and 6, the end of 4 and 6 says, In love he predestined us for the adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. You and I are child, a child of the king. In chapter uh, 1, verse 13, it says that we are included in Christ, that he marked us with a seal, the promise of the Holy Spirit. And he talks about how we are heirs of God. And you go on in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, which I made reference to. It says that we have the mind of Christ. How does Christ's mind operate? Does he think temporary or does he think eternal? How does Christ operate? Is his mindset, was it a temporary mindset or was it eternal mindset? Eternal mindset. So then you and I have the mind of Christ. So we have to, we have to remind ourselves all the little things that we get caught up and busy and frustrated. And da, 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 da. Eternal mindset. I'm thinking long term here. Eternal mindset. Now, I know there's things we have to do. I know there's things we have to deal with. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying in the big picture, in the back, in, 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 the, the overall way that we filter and look at everything should be with an eternal mindset. With an eternal mindset, we don't run from problems because we understand that we're in this earth to solve problems. Let me say that again. With an eternal mindset, we don't run from problems. Because we have a mindset that we're in this earth to solve problems. And that you and I have been given the mind of Christ in order to solve problems. The world doesn't know what to do. They throw their hands up. They, they stress out. They, they grasp. They look for all kinds of ways to solve earthly problems. Um, I heard one minister say that there isn't, there, there isn't enough information in the earth to solve the problems that are coming at the people of the earth. Very interesting. He said it's going to take a spiritual mindset to solve the problems that the world's facing. That's pretty powerful. I'm going to say that again. The, the problems that are facing the people of the earth are not found in the information of the earth. It takes a spiritual mindset, the, 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 the word of God, the word of God being processed through the believer and delivered to solve the problems that the, earth, that the world's facing. You and I, we are carriers of that anointing. That's what I've been teaching on Sundays, that anointing, right? Say, so you have the mind of Christ, right? Say, I have the mind of Christ. Well, you know what you've been learning on Sundays, right? The anointing is the burden-removing, yoke-destroying power of God. See, your mindset is that which removes burdens, destroys yokes, and has power. Amen? Amen? So you stop focusing on the problems. You stop focusing on the shortcomings of people. Now, I'm preaching to myself up here too, right? <laughs> and we all get caught in that trap, I think. You have to be, I mean, it, it, it takes a tremendous amount of humility to not get caught up in that trap. And that's something that has to be cultivated in us. My wife and I have been talking about this. Wow, how, you know, the, 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 the humility and how we cultivate humility in, in our own self and in our own life, you know. And, but it, it takes that. It takes that. And that's what, that's what leaders, that's what the body of Christ needs to cultivate more and more and more, is that humility. Praise God. Did you get something out of this? Stand to your feet, please. Praise God. What a wonderful opportunity that you and I have to have an eternal mindset, right? We don't get, have to get caught up in what is all temporary and what is all this and what's all that. We can look long-term, praise God. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you, Father, for the word of God. Lord, that we are sanctified through your word. We're sanctified through your truth. <laughs> it's literally cleaning us up, separating us. So, Lord, we just thank you as we've looked at these scriptures and, and made reference to them and, and our eyes have looked upon them. We've, we've, we've seen different aspects of it. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that you are helping us. You're helping us with this eternal mindset, that we don't get caught up on, on things that are here, but that we keep our mind on things that are above, things that have eternal weight and consequence, things that matter, 
for the kingdom of God. Lord, we thank you, Holy Spirit, for your help in this area because we need your help. Thank God we have your help. In Jesus' name, amen. Just to be clear, if there's anybody here that doesn't know Jesus Christ or is, doesn't have a relationship with the, with the Lord, uh, we want to give you that opportunity to receive Jesus as the Lord of your life. And so if you're here, you can come down to this altar. These men and women will be up here to pray with you. Or if you'd like prayer in any area of your life or you know somebody that may be in need of prayer, we are here to join our faith, pray and believe God with you for a mighty move of God and a miracle in Jesus' name. Praise God, you're the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, blessed going in, blessed going out. Everything you set your hand to, you're the lender, not the borrower. You're good looking, you're dismissed. God bless you.